Yeah, running it down on these niggas. Uh-huh. Sex, drugs, money, and murder, my nigga. You know how we did it, my nigga. Still be painting them bitches, my nigga. Ripping that roll over, fucking your bitches. Sex, drugs, money, and murder. 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 Niggas, they never go hurt you. Uh-huh. Niggas, they never go hurt you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sex, drugs, money, and murder. Uh-huh. Sex, drugs, uh-huh. money, and murder. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was the traps right on the sand, had to get that. Uh-huh. Ran down on them niggas with a flip back. Knew I never seen none of nigga live like that. I was still getting sex back. Had to fuck around getting them packs back. Niggas. Biggie's dead because Pac lied. You know what I'm saying? If he doesn't lie, we don't have an East Coast, West Coast beef. We don't have, like, he, he's dead because he lied. Give me the lie. He said that Biggie set him up. Mm-hmm. You know Biggie didn't set you up. You know he didn't set you up. You know that he didn't know you was coming to the studio. Mm-hmm. You know that. Why would you say that? You know, you're 1,000% sure. Why would you say that? That is the reason why they took our mans from us. Because one lie. Do you think it was a lie or a misunderstanding? No, it was a lie. And he knew, he knew that, he knew, he knew it had nothing to do with Biggie, 1,000%. Mm. Then why do you think he said that? Because he didn't want to say what really happened. Mm. Mm. How about that? He was the only nigga that woo, woo, woo. But he, and he told me like, about a week before I got shot, he knew the nigga that was shot me, and he was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga, you know what I mean? You know, we walked in with the nigga that shot me, and ended up shooting me. He's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga, because I knew the nigga too, he was my Kogi fan. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later, and we didn't talk. Ne- the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like, mm-hmm. I'ma come see. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. Cause they bragging, they telling they niggas in jail. Yo, we just got popped, woo, 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 woo. And my cousin was in jail in New York cause I got family out there. Mm-hmm. He sit right there while the niggas get in the car going, yo, my homeboy is just jacked that nigga too pop. So that's how I knew, shot me, what happened and everything. They mad because I know what happened. That's why. So ladies and gentlemen, with Lord Scotty. You know, before we start this video, I want y'all to do is smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video, and make sure y'all hit that notification bell. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and smash the like button. It's your boy Bullets Gotti. It's the Bullets Gotti show. Salute. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Bullets Gotti. Um, you know, I've been chilling. I ain't been, I was supposed to drop a couple videos. I'm going to drop three videos today for my people that was missing me. Um, But I really want to touch on the the topic, which has to go with the whole Biggie Smalls, the iconic records episode. I think it was the last episode, episode five. Um, And... I really want to touch on Clark Kent because he been making a lot of crazy statements. You know, the chronic not being a classic and, you know, doggy style being a classic. You know, you get no chronic if you don't. You get no doggy style if you don't get no chronic. It's just is what it is. You know, doggy style was the sequel of the chronic. OK. The chronic was the prequel and doggy style was the sequel. Okay, of the chronic. So it was basically in without the chronic, there is no ready to die. That album inspired ready to die. The chronic. So let me just say this about what Clark Kent said about Tupac. It's the funk master flex syndrome. Okay? And these dudes with their lies and their narratives and they and they and they force uh propaganda okay these are the same dudes that basically they're going to defend who they're going to defend i'm and 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 clark kent knows what happened because he was cool with jimmy he was cool with jack he was cool with the dudes that basically had something to do with pot getting shot okay anybody in brooklyn know who who shot pot it wasn't Dexter. I- it wasn't Dexter Isaac. 
you know, it wasn't Dexter Isaac. So when people say Dexter Isaac, no, it wasn't. It was it was Little Sean's co-defendant. Okay. It was your man's, because that's that's Clark Kent's man's too. And it was Haitian Jack man's. That shot and raw Tupac at Quad Studio. When did Tupac ever say? That's the thing. When did Tupac ever say? And this is why I always, this is what always triggers me. When did he ever say Biggie was the one that lined him up and set him up? He never said that. What we said on Against All Odds was Jack, Jimmy, and he said Tut name. Right? Now, Tut didn't shoot Pac. He didn't, he, he was there. Nubs was there. Tut never shot Pac. Who shot Pac was Little Sean's co-defendant, who I will not say who was from the nine, who was from the nineties, who was a, a a reputable, you heard unsaid his name, and how he met Jack through this same individual, who Jack, Jimmy, all these dudes had ties with this dude. You know what I'm saying? This same dude, you hear his name get ringed off. He's a flat, he's from Flatbush. Via Best Star, you know, because he had ties in Best Star. Tyson is good friends with him. This is the dude that shot Tupac. This is the dude that raw popped for the Roly and pistol whipped him. And basically, this is a dude that Clark Kent is cool with because when Clark Kent was doing his record label, this dude was holding Clark, man. And there's pictures with him and Clark. Okay? Little Sean. Let's, let's, let's keep it real, right? Because it's going to be the 30th anniversary of the robbery. Not the robbery, but the 30th anniversary of the whole case at the hotel with Ayanna Jackson, Jack and Pac getting locked up in November. Okay? 30 years. It's going to be 30 years. All right? Of this whole situation. Right? Now, what people don't understand, right? Pop was moving around with a lot of dudes in New York, not just the Brooklyn Cats. Okay, so you would see him with a T Black and a Jack and a and a and a, and a, and a, and a, and a Jimmy Henchman and many others out of New out of Brooklyn, right? And he was moving around with dudes from Harlem, Queens, the Bronx. He was moving around. Pac was moving around with a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes. Had a lot of respect and love for Pac in New York. Pac is from Harlem. Pac is from Harlem slash the Bronx. He's HBO. He's Harlem Bronx only. Okay. He he was from it. The last place that he lived was 183rd. Okay. It's the last place that Pac lived before he went to Baltimore was 183rd. Pac is a New York dude. Okay. All his semantics are. Him being West Coast, how the hell he a West Coast nigga? He started East and West beef, and he's from the East Coast. He's born in Harlem Hospital, my nigga. He's a Harlem nigga. So what is what is we talking about when you dudes keep saying East and West beef? He's not a West Coast dude. Now he had his issues with dudes out the East Coast. He didn't, you didn't hear him dissing. Like people keep forgetting, this man had ties with Prem. You know what I'm saying? This man, you know, like you heard, like, 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 he had ties with, with, with B.O. Shout out to R.I.P. B.O. You know, Pistol Pete and many others. Unique. Many others. Gangsta Lou. He was out there in Harlem chilling with Gangsta Lou and them. You know what I'm saying? So, Pop been around a lot of reputable dudes in New York. And, 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 and stories that niggas don't understand. He is a rep. He was a reputable dude, a stand-up dude. But what people got to understand, when you talk about that story in Quad Studio, y'all miss an intricate part of that story, right? When Pac got lined, when he came from Ron G's house, right, with Nichols, Stretch, Zay, and his dude, uh, Man Man, right? When all of them came from... Ron G's crib in the polo grounds and they went straight to Quad Studio. Pac had two hammers on him. Okay? They didn't know Pac had two hammers on him. Pac was getting ready to shoot tight and nubs. Son that shot him 
Okay? Because I know I knew the story firsthand because somebody uh, older, uh, one of my OGs told me the story. Pac was going to shoot both of them. Son from the 90s, the OG, I'm not going to say the old, the, the, the Little Sean co-defendant. I'm just going to say Little Sean co-defendant. Little Sean co-defendant, okay, was the one that basically um, shot and pistol with Pop. And he took the rollie. I think they took the rollie and they took the chain and they took the bracelet. The same bracelet that Lil Sean said he snatched, he robbed off of the dude from um, third base, DJ Richie Rich, which he didn't. Who robbed him was his co-defendant that robbed him and took the bracelet. But they don't never tell that story of who robbed Pop because they want to keep hiding. Nigga, everybody in the streets know that Lil Sean co-defendant was the one that robbed him. That was Jack main man. That was Jimmy Hinchman's main man. That's who robbed him. Okay, the same nigga that was a part of the Poison Clan and 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 M One and all that. And, you know what I'm saying? You see them post his pictures up on on on, on Tom Blanco page and and all these other pages. You know what I'm saying? You know he's Mike Tyson man. That's Mike Tyson homie. That's who that's who Mike Tyson was telling Pac to stay away from. He was only telling him to stay away from Jack and Jimmy, but he's telling him to stay away from Little Sean's co defendant. You know what I'm saying? Little Sean's co defendant. That's the one that, like I said, he was the one that pistol whipped and shot Tupac. Now Carl Kent is with the funk flex. Having a funk flex moment, talking about P Tupac Lod, Tupac Lod, it, it, like the whole funk flex, like dude, Tupac ain't loud. All Pac said was he should have let me know who did what and whoop de whoop what happened. That's what he should have let me know. Let me know what happened so I could react a certain way. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do that. What he did was he let that man. He he led that man into. A a a a a a a a hey, just just to guess who's who. You know what I'm saying? So when Pac got robbed and he got shot, you know what I'm saying? It was like like Jimmy Hinchman is on audio. If you go back and you look, it's a video where he's interviewed where he basically said, Oh, Pac was doing theatrics and 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 and, and this is and he was just only thing he was supposed to do was, you know. Play, play, play his position and play, play his part. Because him and Jack felt some type of way, and the dude, like I said, homie co-defendant, and them felt some type of way with him saying what he said. Niggas went, he went to jail for niggas' guns. This is what people keep missing out. Pop went to jail for having niggas' guns in his in his room. As far as the the, the forceful touching on Ayanna Jackson. But they don't talk about that, right? They'll sit here and lie and say, oh, Pac ain't a real nigga. And, like, they'll do the whack 100 and, and, and try to put blame on Pac. Pac ain't had nothing to do with the East and West beef. That was all Jimmy Hinchman and Haitian Jacks that started that East and West beef. Okay? Because if Shorty didn't come to Park and Meridian Hotel after... Pop had just finished above shooting above the rim. This man would have never went to jail, and he would have never caught the gun charges, and he would have never caught the the, the 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 forceful touching charges because he caught a gun charge, gun charges, and forceful touching. They never talk about the gun charges that he caught for jacking them, and many and Biggie and them because Biggie and them had their hammers in his room, and the rest of the dudes that had their hammers in his room. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about that right there. And 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 this is why when when people they make up these 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 strong men arguments because I call them strong men arguments, and they try to put it out on oh Tupac this Tupac Tupac ain't do nothing. He ain't do nothing that 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 call for him to be incarcerated, sitting on in Clinton Correctional Facility. You know what I'm saying? Like, upset. But nobody reads the Vibe magazine article where he tells you who's lined him up. 
when he tells you Lil Sean was in the studio crying, when he tells you that Andre Harrell was in there, Puff was in there, Jimmy Hinchman was there, Jack wasn't there, but Jimmy Hinchman was there. You know what I'm saying? So when you got a dude like a Claw Kent, like, and shout out to, and shout out to, um, Un, right? Un, Un didn't say, yo, uh, Tupac is to blame for Biggie death. You never heard Un said that. You never heard Gene Deal said that. But you'll say, you'll have a Claw Kent and all these other dudes saying, oh, it's Tupac, Tupac. Nigga, please. Tupac ain't the blame for that. The blame for that is Jimmy Hinchman and Haitian Jack, my nigga. That's the blame for that. And, and, and little Sean's co-defendant who shot Tupac. That's the blame for that. Because all niggas had to do was be up front with it and say who shot Pop. Who robbed Pop. What, what, where it came from. That's all. You know what I'm saying? It's just like when 50, 50 got shot. Niggas telling 50, oh, 50 wrong for... Nah, 50 wasn't wrong. Because a nigga got shot. <laughs> you get shot nine times. You already got stabbed in the studio. You get shot nine times. And a nigga want to tell you how to react to wolves, a nigga that did you dirty? Like, Pop not, was it blaming Biggie? He was blaming the dudes. He was really, his blaming, his 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 anger wasn't towards Big. It was really towards who he felt was involved. And who had their hands responsible. And he directed to the dudes that he felt that was directly responsible for that. You know what I'm saying? So when Clark can't come on the uh, on, on 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 the platform and say what he's saying, like dog, you you just you just saying anything for shock value, and you just wanna you just because that's your man, Biggie's your man, just like Jay is your man. You know what I'm saying? You just wanna be biased. You know what I'm saying? That's all Clark Kent is. He's just being biased. But if you're gonna be biased, my nigga, be 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 realistic with your biasness. Don't 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 be biased, and then you ain't gonna tell the truth. Nigga, then if you know, then say it, nigga. Because you know, just like everybody else from Brooklyn knows, who did what they did to Pac. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it was Sun co defendant that did it. Okay? And that's your man's too, little Sean. That's who did it. That's who lied. That's who shot and raw Pac. That's who pistol whipped him. You know what I'm saying? And niggas thought, oh, Pac was bugging. Pac wasn't bugging. Pac was, Pac was on some like, yo, my nigga, y'all niggas going to lie me. I ain't did nothing to you niggas. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't hating on no big and all that. He was just saying, yo, that's my little bro. And that's it. The nigga ain't had no hate for New York. If a nigga had hate for New York, he would have not squashed. He would have he would have went to war with Nas. You saw he squashed it with Nas. You saw he, 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 him and Eric B was around him. Big D. Cream and all them, they was around Pop. So he he must be didn't have any hate for New York. If he around reputable individuals, Chaz and all them, he's around all these reputable New York dudes. So how does this dude got hate for New York? Y'all niggas just being biased because it's y'all peoples. Just like how y'all was biased against oh 50 cent killed New York. That's y'all favorite word. Oh 50 killed New York City. 50 this, 50 that. But nobody tells how New York City blackballed 50 Cent. See, New York is a dick riding. New York City is a dick riding city, man. A nigga had to go to California to get a deal. That's the same with Tupac. He had to go fuck with Death Row because nobody that was supposed to be his means in New York showed him any love or got him out. So he had to go to Death Row. Just like how 50 had to go to M. Dre for a deal. So it's a whole lot of bias. It's a whole lot of fugazi shit. A lot of niggas, everybody wants to oh, say, Pac was wild and Pac was. No, Pac wasn't wild and Pac was being what it what it truthfully was that niggas did him dirty and he had every right to go as hard as he went. He went as hard as he went. He he wasn't trying, like he said, man. I sold five million records, six million records. My nigga, he was selling six million records. He was doing crazy numbers off of All Eyes On Me. Like you said, we sold all these units. If it was a problem, you would have seen it was a problem. That's what he said at the MTV Awards. If it was a problem, you would have seen a problem. When he came to New York, nobody showed out. Henchman and them was, was, was hiding. 
But the henchman to tell you, oh, he ran down on, he ran down on, 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 on pop with, with, with some rolling 60s. That was cap. Okay. Pac was coming out here to New York. Eric B was with him. Preen. All these niggas was around. Chaz, Big D. All these, all these niggas was around Pac. Nobody was popping out. When Pac came out here with the double eyes, Fort Green niggas was with him. Queens niggas was with him. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and, and the LA niggas. But the majority was all East Coast niggas with Pop when he came out here on that Death Row E shit, when they did MTV. So all this, what they talking about, oh, Pop, he had, Pop had a whole bunch of real ones around him when he came back out here. So even when he got shot, he still was running with the realest of the realest out of New York. The real ones from New York. So when dudes say, oh, Tupac, Tupac, Tupac was, oh, he wasn't, he was hiding, he was scared. Like, scared of what? What are you scared of? Scared of what? Like, these are imaginary, like, niggas be having mythological stories about the henchmen and the, and the Haitian jacks. They extorted who they extorted in the industry. They slapped up who they slapped. It was just like when they when they tried to win that 50. 50 wasn't going for it. He wasn't going for it with, 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 with henchmen. He wasn't going for it. Let's keep it real. He wasn't going for it. Like, when dudes said, oh, 50, 50 wasn't going for it. That's why 50... He ain't back down. He, the same, like 50 had the same energy that Pac had when it came to his son. You know what I'm saying? Son thought, oh, we're going to try to extort 50 Cent. And it wasn't going down like that. 50 wasn't going down. Just like Pac, he wasn't going for it. You extort these other niggas. Nas is another one. They don't talk about Nas. No, they try to go at Nas. Jack and, and, and Henchman. Try to thought they were going to play the extortion game. It don't work with everybody. Everybody not going. Everybody not going for it. They did it to the niggas that they knew was so off in the industry. So they'll smack up a Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? They'll 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 have J O felony diss a J. You know, or or smack up another uh, a couple more rappers. That's what they was doing. Smacking up, store, and then doing all that. That's what they was doing. So when Hinchman go to jail and Jack gets deported. It's, 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 it's a breather because a lot of these niggas was under pressure about these niggas. But it was niggas that was giving it to them niggas that wasn't backing down. Like, niggas don't talk about the story where Pete was telling Jack to come up in the VIP at the tunnel. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about when Pete told Jack to come on stage at the tunnel. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about um none of these situations. But they always talk about oh Jack and Jimmy was was running these niggas. Like they ran who they ran, my nigga. They extorted who they extorted. So Jack is extorting, is protecting and extorting Steve Stout. That's what he was doing. When Puff bust son upside the head. Who did who did son go for for protection? Haitian Jack. You know what I'm saying? So Pop had every right to say what he's saying because he was like, yo, all these niggas getting started in New York by Jack and Jimmy. Which was facts. You know what I'm saying? And 50, you know, and, and, and Pop wasn't going for it. That's why these niggas was like they 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 made these niggas in their opinion was a problem. So that's why Jimmy wanted to go to war, with, went to war with Pac, and went to war with 50, because it's like, hold up, y'all niggas think y'all, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So these niggas didn't like that a nigga was going against the grain, but everybody ain't going for it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't going for it. Everybody ain't going for it, just like how Nas wasn't going for it with Jimmy Hinchman and Jack, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't going for it either. That's why when 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 they try to come at him, <laughs> they had to respect his gangster. So it's niggas that ain't going for it, man. That's why I respect Nas. That's why I respect Pac. That's why I respect Fifty. Cause niggas can't never say they extorted those three men in the rap game. It's other rappers, nigga. They was getting extorted. It's what it is. So you know when dudes say Pac is the blame for the East and West beef. Tell me where. Where is he to blame at? 
Because when I look at it, he was never to blame for the East and West beef because we all know that Jimmy Henchman and Haitian Jack was responsible for all of that because just look at what they did. The drama that they 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 did by always putting the blame on Suge Knight. Oh, Suge Knight, Suge Knight. Always putting the blame on Suge, Suge before before Big Jake died. Suge and Puff was cool. Let's keep it real. They was cool. Puff and Pop, Biggie and Pop, they all was cool. But when Jimmy and Jack gets involved, you get the the Parker Marinian situation, the Quad Studio, the Source. All this stuff happened because you got dudes like that. They had their hand in that bullshit. They had their hand in that gumbo. You know what I'm saying? And, and and it is what it is, man. They had their hand in that. Jack said it on, 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 on a joint. That son called them. Little Sean co defendant called him on the phone. And told him after they did what they did to Pop. So, why is niggas acting surprised? That's what happened. So, it is what it is, man. It's your boy Bullets Gotti. Salute. This video, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Make sure we get into the algorithm. Like, share, and subscribe if you like this this video. And hit the notification bell. It's your boy, Bullis Gotti. Bullis Gotti Show. Too clean.